Hello, football family. Welcome in the Huddle It Up Films. Today, we're talking about the Ravens play calling, something that's always a hot topic for everybody. And today, I have Gabe Fergie, guest, Mr. Ferguson from the Ravens Situation Room, here to join me. He studied this kind of thing, and I really wanted to get his opinion and some of the data on this. Uh, Gabe, how are you doing, and where can people find your work? So I'm doing great. Thank you, by the way, for having me on your your uh, show here. I'm really excited to come talk about the Ravens. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is here, at Gabe Fergie. I also host a podcast uh, with Jordan Coe, um, I think you ha who you've had on before, um, over at um, filmstudybaltimore.com. We, um, we host a podcast called The Situation Room, and it's a weekly podcast during the season. We talk about kind of the big moments that happened during the game and kind of like what happened and, and how it affected the game. And, and we'd like to break it down from an interesting perspective. And I like their perspective uh, for a couple of reasons. I, me personally, I'm more of a player performance, a grading kind, kind of person. But Gabe and Jordan really get into the X's and O's a lot. Uh, they get into second guessing the call. What can we do to improve the offense? Almost from like a coordinator's perspective. So if you enjoy that type of thing, I, I highly encourage you to check out uh, Gabe and Jordan's work. And yes, Jordan will be on the program by the time we air this. You'll have a Jordan episode, so everybody will get to know him as well. It, it was a really fun time. But uh, jumping into it here, the Ravens, we're here to talk about specifically second down and short. Um, real quick, why is second and short uh, an opportunistic down? What makes it so opportunistic, especially for a team like the Ravens, who can convert on short yardage situations? So essentially it gives you kind of a free play an opportunity to take a shot down the field, um, use play action, maybe pick up a chunk yardage play in, in the passing game. Because even if you don't convert on that on that play downfield or or whatever type of play you call, you're still going to have third and short. And if you have good field position, you have fourth and short. So you have potentially three opportunities to convert that first down, and you can take advantage of those downs to try and get a, a big play in, in between. So yeah, especially at midfield, for, you know, in between the forties. I mean, it's a, it's a good place. The Ravens have shown they're they're not afraid to go for it on fourth down. It's it's in Harbaugh's DNA, it seems like. And then when you have a quarterback like Lamar, who can, you know, basically you can make it make the defense play eleven on eleven, and Lamar is going to get his his yards. Um, you know, second and third, second and sh second second and two, or or excuse me, if it's third and two, fourth and two, you can count on Lamar to get those yards and get in the field position. But um, what kind of what kind of data do you have as far as like how often the Ravens run on on a second and short? And could you define how you uh, what second and short is like how you accumulate that? So I define second and short as second and one or second and two. So okay. basically, you have one or two yards to gain a first down. And when I looked at the data, basically over the past two years, I I first looked at this past year, twenty twenty, and I think the Ravens had thirty four opportunities in the second and short as I defined it and 32 of those opportunities they ran the ball which is an incredibly high Man. percentage um so two pass plays they had um they were both success successful plays they picked up the first down but I feel like that's an opportunity that was missing um so I went back and I looked a little further back to 2019 and it was they even had more opportunities in 2019 they had a total of, of 51 opportunities in the second and short and 43 times they ran the ball and only eight times did they pass it so it's a pretty consistent kind of um, tendency that they've had over the past two years when they're in these situations they run the ball they want to pick up that first down and they kind of av avoid this opportunity to pick up a, a chunk yardage play down the field right and i think fans overlook this and I'm, I'm guilty of it too because gabe it's hard it's hard to complain about moving the chains you know second short first down okay here we go again but you're right. I mean, uh, especially with the speed that we have in Hollywood Brown and really, I mean, Boykin runs fast. DuVernay runs fast. They haven't proven themselves as downfield receivers yet. But why not take a take a shot? What was the number again last year? It was only two times we threw one second short. Two times they threw the ball. And I can actually bring up what happened on those two plays. One of them was a 30 yard completion to Marquise Brown. And the other one was a 12 yard pass completion to Devin DuVernay. So in those two plays that they did take some type of, you know, a pass play to try and pick up a little bit more of a chunk yardage, it was very successful for them. So I think there's definitely the ability to kind of use those opportunities for the gain of the offense. What I'm going to try to do, Gabe, is after the show, I'm going to get those plays from you. If you have like the, 
the time of game and I'll, I'll put them over our faces because Lord knows, you know, we're not the best looking guys over here, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the, so the fans can see the play calling on those plays, but yeah, so both of the passes converted, um, that's, that's really interesting. That's a high number, even from what I thought. I, I figured it'd be like a three out of four. We ran it on, on, on third, on uh, second and short. That's an incredible number. Um, so how do you see, do you see the off season moves affecting our philosophy or is this just a Greg Roman thing that we're going to have to live with? So I think it's a good question. And one of the things that gives me some hope that it might change a little bit is because, you know, the Ravens, I feel like are a team that has really embraced analytics. And I think this idea of, of, you know, taking a shot on the second down or second and short, I should say, is, is kind of an analytics driven, driven thing because I mean, there's data dating back for over a decade, you can look at the accept, expected points um, added by a first down play. And, and a, a first down play of nine yards is actually the one of the biggest expected points added you can have outside of a huge gain down the field because it puts you in that second and short position. So like if they're looking at this kind of data and they have, I'm sure, tons of it to analyze, they can say, hey, why are we not taking advantage of these situations more? So I think that, you know, they kind of embrace the going for it on fourth and short um, this is kind of another you know, step that you can take. And like you mentioned, there's also the changes to personnel that the Ravens have made. So you bring in some guys that can really stretch the field better than what you've had in the past. Obviously, Marquise Brown is still around, but with someone like Rashad Bateman, who has good speed, someone like Sammy Watkins, who is not just a speedster, but he can also win at the intermediate level. Um, you still have someone like Boykin. You still have people like Andrews who can, you can threaten the middle of the field. They have the players in this, you know, offense that can really make a defense pay if they're going to kind of try and sell out to stop the run in these second and short situations. Well, I agree, and I think also aside from the weapons, the pass protection uh, should be better for the Ravens across the board this year. I mean, Ronnie Stanley, you saw those second and short numbers go way skewed from 2019 to 2020, uh, 2020 to. Um, <clears throat> to more runs on second and short. And maybe that had to do with the pass protection. Maybe they didn't have as much faith in Fluker and uh, Tyree Phillips to hold up on one edge and uh, without Stanley out of the lineup. But when you look at Ben Cleveland, I don't think he allowed a sack in his last college year. It's some, some kind of ridiculous numbers to show how good he is in pass protection because everybody sees Ben Cleveland as this big hawking people mover, which he is, but he's also very good in pass protection. Bozeman, I think, will be better in pass protection as a center, Gabe, because some of these three techs that he faced were a little quick for him, and he would give up quick pressures. You know, it was only two or three times a, day, a game, but that's enough to blow up a drive and take a second and short into a third and long. So, uh, And then Zeitler, of course, is very steady at right guard. So if you look at the line across the board, I think that that also gives us more of an opportunity to take pass plays or to throw one set in second and short. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. And I think another thing that the Ravens like to do and it can really be beneficial in these situations is also the type of motions that they like to use in their offense and even, you know, using play action. Because, like, like I said, this is a pretty significant tendency that the Ravens have shown on tape now for two years. Defenses are going to expect it. They're going to expect the Ravens to run. Those linebackers are going to be sucked in. Maybe even a safety is going to come in and suck in and try and stop that. So if you have an opportunity to leak even like a two-man route behind there and get someone deep, I think you can hold up in pass protection and still take a shot. And if it doesn't land, you know, you can come back on third and short and run the ball and get that first down. Or fourth down, you know. Or fourth and, down. And or fourth down because, uh, because I have uh, so much faith in the Ravens run game. And one of the things that it's kind of funny, this is kind of a polarizing hot take by me. I've gotten some pushback on this, so I want to run it by you. But the Ravens for two straight years have led the league in rushing attempts. They've also led the league in yards per rush. So, of course, that means they led the league in rushing yards for two straight years, almost by a mile. I mean, even with Derrick Henry and the Titans. My take is that if we're not the top rushing team, at least by a mile, maybe we finish second or third in rushing, that we'll be a better team for it because I don't have any questions whether we're going to be able to run the ball. I know we're going to be able to run the ball. If it's there, we're going to take it. Some teams are going to try to take the run away from us, and they can't do anything about it. What I want to see is us be able to expand our game to take advantage of a team that can stop our run, but maybe they got a weak cornerback over on the left side. Uh, maybe they got some problems covering somewhere else on the field. So 
if would you think a, a reduced amount of rushes overall, not just on second and short, could help this team? Absolutely. I, th I think you just want to be a little more balanced in your approach. And I think it comes back to what I was saying earlier about tendencies. And, and one of the tendencies that the Ravens have had, not just running on second and short, it's also been running on first down. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's something that you put on the film. And, and at times you can break that tendency and you can take and get a big gain out of it. But if you mix it up a little bit more, then you make the defense really cover more of the field. And that's kind of what you're trying to do. You don't, you don't want to allow them to take away what you're good at. And you want to force them to try and, you know, um, try and do everything that they can because you can't stop the pass and the run. Um, but if, if you can um, be really balanced in, in your approach and you can threaten them at all levels, then I think it makes you much more harder to stop as an offense. I mean, and think about what we had to do last year, Gabe, when defenses adjusted, they finally were able to slow down the read option for the first time. Lamar had a groin injury that he was hiding from the beginning of the season, but we could kind of tell it was affecting him, especially in his jukes. Like his straightaway speed was still on point, but as far as making that unblocked defensive end uh, miss, he was kind of taking it a little bit easy. So you saw how we had to adjust with the counter bash, and also we threw to Ricard a lot in the flat on first down, that kind of thing, which is – a low, I mean, it's a high percentage completion, but it's a low percentage payoff as far as the yards you're going to get. So those are the situations game on first down. And I'll have some numbers that I'll put up because I was actually talking to at Yoshi about this Ravens numbers guru about how often we run on first down. And what he does is he takes out the scrambles, which count technically as runs, but they were called pass plays. So it's a really true way to look at how often we call passes on first downs, how often we call runs on first downs. And I'll include that in the video as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see at least I got somebody in my corner on that because uh, maybe somebody that disagreed with me can, can comment below and say, hey, we need to keep this number one rushing attack up. But I think whether the numbers say we're number one in rushing or not, we are the number one rushing attack. And if we have a passing game that can cut in, that is capable enough to cut into those numbers, I actually think we'll be better off and a better balanced team, give teams more to think about and more to defend. Definitely agree with that. And in the end, it's all about efficiency because you want that yards per play number to be up there and you want those, those points per drive numbers to be up there. Those are the efficiency stats that are really going to make you a top offense. And even if you don't have the most rush yards, for example, in the NFL, if you're still at that 5.0 yards per attempt, then you're still winning as far as I'm concerned because you're also going to have an explosive passing game with the weapons that the Ravens have brought in. And, and we know what Lamar Jackson can do behind a good offensive line and a good, you know, balanced passing attack where two years ago he was the MVP, threw, he threw 36 touchdowns. That wasn't a fluke, I don't think. No, no, he can throw the ball, man. That's it's no doubt about it. Like any young quarterback, he's got things that he can work on and he'll get better. And, you know, I made the argument, and I'll have a video out on this too, my kind of like soapbox about Lamar, but I really believe he was a better quarterback last year than he was in 2019. It was just what happened around him was tough to deal with, where 2019 was just like open, wide open lane for him to run through. And 2020, you had injuries, weather, all this other stuff that I'm not going to get into. But, uh, but Gabe, I wanted to thank you very much for coming on and going over those numbers with us. And uh, once again, I'm going to have your links, your and Jordan's work. I encourage everybody to follow Gabe on, on Twitter and to follow his work on the Situation Room. Gabe, is, uh, is there anything else that, uh, that you'd like to say about the second and short? And what's, what's your final evaluation of this before we, uh, before we sign off? You know what? I just say one thing. It's something that Jordan and I always used to laugh about. We call it death taxes and the Ravens running on second and short. Let's hope that maybe that, that saying can be uh, buried this year and we can start something new on, on, the, on these passing opportunities. All right, Gabe. Thank you so much. And Gabe's one of the first people that welcomed me online when I finally came out of uh, my shell and started doing stuff. So Gabe and Jordan always have a special place in my heart. Gabe, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Jason. All right.